Hey guys, Sam Terrell, the Northwest Aeronaut. Welcome back to 65 Kilo Delta, and today we're talking about slow flight. We're gonna take a deep dive into slow flight. So, of course, anytime we slow an airplane down, we're reducing the amount of wind going over the wing. And whenever the amount of wind going over the wing is reduced, we lose lift. All right? So, how do we make up for that lift? How do we maintain altitude when we reduce the speed of the wind over the wing? Well, we increase our angle of attack. And that's why when we are flying in slow flight, we're not just flying straight and level like we usually are. We have a nose up pitch and we're kind of flying through the air with that nose up attitude. All right, the slower we get, the more nose up attitude we need. Now, right now we're in a nice, relatively slow cruise at 95 miles an hour. You can look out ahead here and you can see our wings are fairly level with the horizon. Our nose is pretty far down. We've got a good view out in front of us. But as we get into slow flight here, you're going to see less of the horizon out front. You're going to see a much higher angle of attack on the wing. And we're going to make sure we use those two words that we talked about in our steep turn video, slow and smooth. There's no rush, especially with this maneuver, right? It's slow flight. It's supposed to be slow. So we want to maintain slow and smooth inputs. When we begin this maneuver, first of all, we're going to make our clearing turns. We're going to do our pre-maneuver checklist. We've already done our clearing turns here. I'm going to make a quick call. West practice area, 65 Kilo Delta, two miles north of St. Paul, 4,500. Slow flight, West practice. All right. So when we're getting into this maneuver, of course, we're going to have to reduce power. If you have a carbureted engine, we're going to pull the carb heat out first because whenever we reduce power below a certain amount, it's good to have that carb heat on. Once we reduce power, our focus is going to be on one thing, and that is maintaining the altitude we're at, okay? As we've talked about in previous videos, flying an airplane is all about energy management and balancing energy. This yoke here, this is how we distribute the energy. We distribute it between either airspeed or altitude. If you want to distribute energy to airspeed, we push forward, we pitch down to distribute it to airspeed and we gain more. If we want to distribute the energy to altitude, we pitch back or pitch up. And that adds the energy of the plane towards altitude. Whenever one of those metrics is constant, all energy changes are only going to affect the other. In other words, when we are keeping the same altitude, when our altitude is remaining constant, when we take energy out of the plane, all that energy loss is going to come strictly from the airspeed, which in the case of slow flight is exactly what we want. So we're going to take total energy out of the plane. The throttle is how we control the total amount of energy going into the plane. We are going to be taking total energy away from the plane, and we are going to draw that excess energy from our airspeed while maintaining altitude. All right, I got the Willamette River out here in front of me. That's going to be my visual reference. I'm at 4,500. And all we're going to do here is we're going to pull this carburetor heat out, okay? And I'm going to pull this power back. I am only concerned with maintaining altitude. So, of course, as I pull that power back, my nose needs to keep coming up. But I'm only holding altitude. Don't pull so much that you start climbing because then you're taking away energy from altitude. We are in our wide arc now. So now I'll put our flaps down to the uh, landing position. 30 degrees is what I'm doing here today. Just 30, not 40. And then as we slow down, we're going to be looking for an airspeed of about 50 miles an hour. And of course, as we get to the back side of the power curve, we're going to need more power in order to hold altitude, not less. All right, here we go, we're approaching 50. You can see my airspeed hasn't changed, or sorry, my altitude hasn't changed this whole time. I've only been drawing energy away from airspeed. All right, I'm getting set here. I've got my power set at 1900 and I am trimmed for level flight at 50 miles an hour. And that is exactly what we want to do. I took my time with it. Now, even though take, I'm taking my time with it, it shouldn't take you that long if you're being efficient with your inputs. And from here, I can just really keep the wings level with my rudder. I can even make turns with my rudder. 
and I can just use the yoke to control the pitch to make sure that my airspeed isn't uh, fluctuating with drops or rises in the nose. As always, when we're on the back side of the power curve like this, we're going to use power to control our altitude. So if I see myself starting to sink, I'm just going to add a little tiny bit of power. If I see myself starting to, uh, to, uh, if I see myself starting to climb, I'm going to reduce a little bit of power. But right now it's a beautiful, stable day. These are the perfect types of days to practice this type of skill because everything's so stable and I can just fly with my feet basically. All right. Remember when we are flying at slow air speeds, we don't need a lot of bank angle. You get a very high rate of turn for a very small bank angle uh, compared to when we are going fast, okay? All right, we got Mount Hood ahead of us. We're gonna resume normal flight, except actually we got some traffic up here, so I'm gonna turn away from them and then we'll resume normal flight. And guess what? When we resume normal flight, it's the same process. We are wanting to keep our altitude the same so that all the energy we're gonna be putting into the airplane through our throttle goes straight to airspeed, okay? Now, in order to do that, as we add power, we gotta push forward on the yoke, right? This is our energy distributor, and we already talked about if we want our energy distributed to our airspeed, we have to push forward, and that's no different here because as we add power, the nose is going to want to rise. So we're just pushing forward to keep the nose down and force that energy to go towards airspeed, not towards altitude. Okay, here we go. We got our uh, our heading here, and I'm just going to start. I'm going to put the carpet in. I'm going to put the power in, and all I'm focused on is maintaining altitude, pushing that nose down pretty significantly until I get these flaps out. There you see our airspeed rising, and now I'm going to take the flaps out. As I take flaps out, I've got to actually relax the forward pressure on the yoke because the nose is going to want to fall as we lose that extra lift from the flaps. So there we go. I'm still pushing forward, putting my power back to where I had it, and that's going to get us back into cruise flight here at the same altitude at about 100 miles an hour. Hey guys, I hope that video was helpful. Please leave some comments if you have any questions. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe. Share this video if you think others could benefit from it. And until next time, resume your own navigation. See ya.